erase this. Pulse has to be consistent. Pulse has to be regular. It can't be funky. Boom, 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 boom. It can be a fast boom, 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 or it can be a slow boom, boom, boom. But it can't be. Can't have that. Can't have that impulse. If you're feeling other than boom, 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 or changes in the rhythm, the doctor needs to know. So pulse can be regular, or pulse can be irregular. Pulse can be regularly irregular or it can be irregularly irregular. So, regular is this. Irregular is this. By the way, what's my irregularity? Uh, that's right. So every fourth beat, I get an extra beat. So you have to determine what the irregularity is and tell the doctor, doctor, you know what, that, that, there's, there's something wrong. You know, he adds an extra beat over there. You really should check this out. Remember, you're the eyes and ears and hands of the doctor. So the doctor needs to know what you're feeling. Be specific. Pulse can be hard soft or it can be regular all these things need to be re recorded but the question is how do you determine whether something is hard or whether something is soft it's all in your perception we're going to come back to this question a little bit later does that make sense mm -hmm. so pulse can be regular pulse can be irregular irregular pulse can be regularly irregular and irregularly irregular. I always like to tell a story about two guys that actually worked for me. Both were both were alcoholics. I'll talk to you next week. Then. Okay. Sounds good. Both were alcoholics. One would start drinking every two weeks. He'd go and drink. Why? Because every two weeks he got paid. And when he got his paycheck, he would go drinking. So the second Monday of every month. Second Monday of every month, he would go missing. And I tried talking to him and tried to help him out, and I couldn't. You know what I did? Because he was reliably unreliable. Okay? I simply changed the schedule, and every second Monday after his pay, I simply didn't schedule anything for him. But after that, he was fine. Two weeks. Then there was another guy. You never knew when he was going to start drinking. He would just start. Then he'd go missing for a day, sometimes a week. Then he would be off the sauce for months and months and months at a time. And then he would fall off the wagon, and etc. Which guy could you work with? The first one. The regularly irregular. That's right. So you can deal with regularly irregular, but you can't deal with, with irregularly irregular. irregular. Okay? And that's what the story is. Does that make sense? Can I erase this? Mm -hmm. And now the breathing. And so the breathing, also known as respiration, respiration, whatever, respiration, oui, oui. Also has to be regular. So since we're dealing with adults, Regular respiratory rate for an adult is anywhere from 16 to 20 respirations per minute. RPM, respirations per minute. Pulse would be BPM or beats per minute. Okay, so 16 to 20. Anything below 16 would be called bradypnea. And anything above 20 will be considered tachypnea. I have a trick question on the final test. I put two of these words together. One I say tachypnea, the other one bradycardia. And most people get confused and say, oh, fast heart rate, slow heart rate. No, one is slow breathing and whatever. So I tried to fool you, but don't tell me I didn't tell you. 
I like people to pass the test. That's why I tell you what's on it. <laughs> okay, does this make sense? Yeah. Breathing has to be regular. It can't be irregular. It can be normal. Sometimes normal is a little on the shallow side. Or... <sighs> either way, unless you just hiked up 10 flights of stairs, you know, you always have to be regular. Does that make sense? Yeah. The instrument we use sometimes to listen to uh, breathing is something called a stethoscope. It's an interesting word. Stetho and scope. Stetho means chest. Actually, you know, there's several words that mean chest. Does anybody know any words that mean chest in medical terminology? Yeah, chest. Well, one of them is thorax or thoraco. Thorax, yeah. And also thoraco. Okay, same word. And one more, pecto. Pecto, yeah. If you go to the gym, like I do all the time, you work out, you work on your pecs. <laughs> this used to be pecs over here, now it's breasts. <laughs> <laughs> Does this make sense? But stetho is one of those. And stethoscope simply means chest listener. Or chest viewer. Scope means to see. In this particular case, it's to hear. So, one thing that you must never tell the patient, and we're going to discuss that, is that you're going to measure their breathing now. It should be a surprise to the patient. Because if you ask him, and if you tell him, breathe normally, all of a sudden the patient, just remember, patient is a different animal from you. Once a person becomes a patient, and if you become a patient and you go to the hospital, someone shows up and says, breathe normal for me, even you will start breathing abnormally because we're not aware of our breathing. You see, body simply does it and it adjusts to the way we live. So right now, I am breathing. I'm breathing kind of normally, but I make adjustments for talking. But somewhere in the background, I'm breathing. So if I tell someone, breathe normally, <sighs> is that normal? How do you tell them? Or is this normal? No, we don't know what normal is. But you do, 16 to 20 breaths per minute, not too deep, not too shallow. And the thing is, especially with women, but when you measure somebody's breathing, where, were, where are you going to look? Who's breathing? Yeah. Chest. 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 Thank you. So, okay, you know what? I'm going to look at your chest now and measure your breathing. What am I looking at? No, I'm looking at her breasts. I know, I don't want to say it. Well, why not? It's a class. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is, I'm looking at some woman's breasts. And I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to stare at your breasts now. You're abusing me. Well, yeah, so what's the woman going to do? Uh, there's several possibilities. <sighs> Take a picture. It'll last longer, right? So the first, excuse, first thing is going to be, all right, another one. And we won't breathe for a minute until the lips turn blue, right? Or get a smack or something like that. So you can't stare at somebody's breast. So what do you do? Close your eyes. Let me demonstrate. You know what? Do me a favor. We'll use you as talent today. Come on up over here. I'll demonstrate. First things first. If you're measuring somebody's breathing, make sure you do that in a sitting position. Because the diaphragm is the mechanism, the, uh, the, what do you call it, the muscle that controls the breathing. If you're lying down, you're not going to be able to feel anything. So, as any healthcare professional, of course, in my case, I don't have one. I, I don't touch patients anymore. I, you know, I'm just going to let you do that. But you have to invest in a cheap watch, like one of those uh, Chinese knockoff Timex watches with a nice second hand that's going to be easy to see. Don't get one of those frou-frou, you know, cutesy watches. Oh, look at that. It's tiny. You're not going to see anything. You need a big, ugly watch with a big second hand. And you put that on your left hand or whatever hand you wear it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take your hand and I'm going to measure your pulse. And by doing so, watch, I'm doing the radial pulse. So I'm going to take her right hand with my left hand and I'm going to put it on her chest. All right? Now, 